This is all Dolphins talk on the Lads Football Network as the Miami Dolphins uh, rebound with a nice win. Try to get back as they are right now inside the playoff picture of the AFC. Getting set now for a three-game homestand starting with the Joe Burrow-less Cincinnati Bengals. How's everything going, Alan? Everything's going very well, actually. Dolphins going great. Sixth spot now in the AFC after that win against the Jets, which was no work of art. But at this time, at this time of year, especially, not concerned about those. You just won those Ws. Yeah, we don't want to see any more Dolphin Jet games this year. Oof. Yeah, yeah, that's just combined, with, combined score forty four to three. Uh, <laughs> yeah, not, not fun football to no. watch. No, uh, Tua late. In the week, it, 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 apparently the injury was a little bit more, more serious uh, than the nation had thought, and th- there's no Tua. So it's interesting because, you know, if you're a Dolphin fan, I got to believe, and I, I know from already reading a lot of the back and forth on, on, on your Twitter page, and, and I'm sure it's going on in the talk shows about Fitzpatrick and should the, should the Dolphins go with Fitzpatrick because he's clearly a better quarterback right now than Tua is. Uh, and then Tua gets hurt and Fitzpatrick has to play and lo and behold, they win the game. He doesn't make any mistakes, even though it was the winless Jets they played. But this is now getting to that point, even though this is still Tua's team, that it's starting to get into oh shaking your head. This is not to his team. No, no. In fact, I wrote a column about about the, that exact topic yesterday. And my point is, it's not to his team. Well, doesn't Flores it's, say it's to to his team? No, well, no. He says to as a quarterback. My point is, it's not to his team. It's not Fitz's team. If we want to appoint somebody as being like the owner of the team, Flores in terms of players. Well, Flores and the defense is. It's, Oh yeah, absolutely. That's, that's, no, that's the point I'm yeah. making. It's not like, but yeah, no question. Oh yes, the guy. No, oh yeah, we all know that. Yes, absolutely. That's a great point to make. No question. This is not the, the Dolphins are not winning and where they are because of the offense. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. Correct. So it doesn't matter who's a quarterback. It, correct. Regardless, like for example, if Tua had played against the Jets, more than likely they would have won. In fact, I would say if Tua had started all 11 games this year. More than likely they'd be seven and four. If it's Patrick had started all eleven games, more than likely they'd be seven and four. They are where they are because of the defense and the special team. Special teams should not take a backseat because it's been outrageous, starting with the kicker Jason Sanders, who again made two fifty yard field goals look like nothing against the Jets on Sunday, while the Jets kicker gagged on a twenty nine yard field goal attempt right before halftime. So combination defense special teams has really driven this team. The quarterbacks have been caretakers. You want to call them game managers. There have been some good performances by Fitzpatrick and by Tua against Arizona was very good. Uh, but more than anything for the quarterbacks this season, it has been about don't blow it. Yeah, and Sanders, I'd have to right now today give him special teams player of the year. I'd I'd have to look to see if anybody's having an outrageous years in terms of returns but as far as kickers I, as far as kickers i mean yeah it's and it's not just that he's with a 24 out of 25 or 25 out of 26 it's because he's got so many of them that are 50 and yeah. beyond eight for I eight mean, 50 plus i mean and he makes them and they're right down the middle i mean yeah he's been outrageous how good he's been yeah, he's, he's 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 at the point this season the way he's kicking that even if you have to decide, like if you had to pick a kicker, even the likes of Tucker, I'd take Sanders because that's how dialed in he is. It's not like you were saying even a month ago, everything that he kicks, with the exception of the Arizona game, everything he kicks basically seems to go down the middle. Correct. And But the thing with kickers is you got to do a year and then you're out. The kickers are very funny that way. Yes. And that's what makes Justin Tucker so good is because yes. he's been – so good for so long. For this year, I, yeah, Justin Sanders has been better than anybody else. Uh, but last year, he was 23 of 30 on field goals. The year before, I believe it was, he may have been like, he missed two the entire year. So so we go from excellent to okay to lights out. So yeah. again, the test for him is- Got to do it again. Yep. Yep. 
So would you say that you are, are you more surprised or not regarding the reaction that, again, I'm not hearing it, I'm not down there, but I'm just guessing regarding Fitzpatrick Tua. There's a lot of, I'm sure there's a ton of pro Fitzpatrick guys that want Fitzpatrick to start. Is it more than you thought it would be? Not really. In fact, no. And in fact, uh, one of my colleagues did a poll today uh, asking fans what their preference would be or what their priority would be for the rest of the season. And the, and the two choices was making the playoffs or Tua's development. And Tua's development is running away with it. So, right. uh, that's, that's perspective. That, no, I'm just saying, well, that, that's, it, I'm shocked because fans usually don't think that way. Fans are usually, I want to win now. I, you know, especially if the team hasn't been into the postseason very often. I want to get to the postseason. I want to win now. Screw was developed. Sure. We'll get that next year. And that's where personally I would be leaning. I know. I, I know. Yeah. I wasn't asked for. I, I hear you. I hear you. Especially after the way to, it's not like Tua played a game. You know, he's played a few games. He, he has sustained a little bit of an injury. That was the, and a different, completely different injury, of course. But, you know, you do tend to wonder whether or not. Uh, I, 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 I'm going to make a prediction that when, if Tua starts this week and doesn't play well and Fitzpatrick comes in, that Fitzpatrick will be the start of the next week. Well, here's the thing. They're playing the Cincinnati Bengals. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, so. And yeah. And with Brandon Allen, the quarterback, they had like under 200 yards of offense against the giants. They don't have Joe Mixon. The odds that, the Dolphins find themselves trailing and to a struggling to the point where they take them out. Yeah. Patrick, they take them out. I think it's very, very unlikely, but let me clarify one thing that I, I want to make clear from my standpoint that because I don't see a huge difference between Fitzpatrick and two at this point, even though I think Fitzpatrick is a better quarterback right now, I don't think that the difference is such that even in the quest to make the playoffs and also because they've already gone to Tua, that once he's healthy, I, I agree with the decision to go back to Tua. That's fully understood. Yes even though the priority to me should be making the playoffs. Yes. Yeah, I, I do too. I think this is a perfect week to be bringing him back. You're playing the Bengals, as you said. There should be no excuse for Tua to not continue to, to well, to, to, to now start an upwards trajectory. And look, he's a rookie. He's going to have a couple of good games, a couple of bad games. He's going to be inconsistent. This has to be one of those good games. You got to show me before we do step up in competition, because this is it. This is the last weak opponent that the Dolphins are going to play. Everything else is going to be tough. Before we get into that four-game stretch of tough teams, show me that I can trust you to be the guy. That would be ideal. because Yeah, you mentioned the stretch. I mean, that stretch includes Kansas City, Vegas, and Buffalo to close out the season. Uh, who knows how many of those games the Dolphins are going to have to win to make the playoffs. And, again, the defense is going to lead the way, but there will be a game or two or three, where the defense can't come up with a big turnover, can't totally shut down the opposition, and that the offense will have to pull its weight. And there's reason to question right now whether uh, th that offense has the ability to do that, regardless of who's playing quarterback. Fitz was six for nine on third downs with two mm -hmm. touchdowns in the game, both to the tight ends. Parker had a season-high 119 yards receiving which is going to happen with the Jets uh, secondary uh, every Oof. week. Uh, the running back situation, the yardage and the impact in the running game was the same, um, as you noted. Uh, but Gaskin and Ahmed uh, could be back this week. At least maybe you get lucky we get one of the two back. DeAndre Washington seemed like he was okay, and he's a decent number three running back. So if you have to go to him in that spot, he's a veteran. He's played a lot of football. I think he's a pretty good pickup uh, for the Dolphins. Uh, of course, Laird and uh, Breda had the fumbles, which wasn't good. Uh, nope. And the offensive line uh, continues to have some issues. No big surprise. They gave up four sacks to the Jets. Um, but it was interesting because I agree with everything you wrote about the running game or the running back specifically and the, and the need for the organization to – Starting this off season, they mm -hmm. now have got at some point, whether it's free agency, but more importantly, the draft, got to bring in an impact runner, some some running back within the top four rounds. No, and and I, I love 
practically everything the Dolphins did in the offseason to improve their roster. The one big miss to me is not getting a running back in one of the first two rounds. There were six drafted in one of the first two rounds. The Dolphins had five picks in those two rounds. They could have gotten an additional pick because they had so much draft capital later in the draft that they could have packaged to move up. And even then, and and I don't want to pick on the kid, and the, he might become a really, really good player, but right now, it's impossible. <clears throat> excuse me. It's impossible not to look at Noah Benagani, who was picked 30th overall, who's played exactly two snaps on defense the, the last four games combined, and not think that that pick might have been better used for Clyde Edwards-Alaire, DeAndre Swift, Jonathan Taylor, J.K. Dobbins, A.J. Dillon, or Cam Akers, who are those six running backs who went in the first two rounds. The Dolphins right now have a collection of guys who have made their way into the NFL. Three of the five are, came into the NFL as undrafted free agents and two are fifth round picks. Yeah. Well, and, and I understand that you can find running backs anywhere, but usually uh, a lot of times you're really, really good running backs tend to be high draft picks. And right now this is what we have. Dolphins don't have a run. Their longest run of the season is 29 yards only. And that's by Jakeem Grant on an end around or jet sweep. I don't recall exactly yeah. which one it was. And the longest run by a running back is 21 yards. Well, they're not really helping their quarterbacks no. in the passing game with, with big plays from the running game. And just, you just don't know if they have the pieces to do it. Do you think that the philosophy is going to be one where, let's say, we're into the offseason before the draft. There are going to be some – and we even talked about Le'Veon Bell before. Would the Dolphins be in the – would they even open up discussions with a type of running back that, look, he's not going to command big money anymore, but he will command money. You know, there'll be salary cap at that, that, that's the type of player that you're going to have to take a look at your cap and decide, okay, how much we want to give this guy. Do you think the Dolphins organization from what you've seen, would it be guessing? Uh, or do you think not, nah, this isn't the type of organization based on what I know or what I've seen so far that is going to even think of spending money with a veteran, maybe aging running back, not he's old, but he is not the player he used to be, as opposed to just, okay, we'll we'll upgrade our running back situation, but we're going to do it through the draft. Yeah, and again, when I try to evaluate what or try to predict what the Dolphins are going to do, there are two things you can use is what they've done here yep. since they've taken over, and then what the, what was done in New England, because like it or not, that's kind of the blueprint they're following. And my guess is paying big money for a free agent running back. It's not their even style. On a, it's not their style, even on a short deal. And this was one other reason why I thought it would make so much sense to, to go after a running back early in the draft into 2020 was that you have basically the control. If you pick him in the first round, well, you have him under control for five years. And if you pick him in the second round, then it's four years. Uh, which is a nice, nice amount of time for, for a position that usually doesn't require that much of an adjustment into the NFL. Yeah. So, yeah, I, that to me was a miss, and I would expect, hope, that they would rectify the situation in 2021. And it probably wasn't a surprise, though, that they did draft Noah, knowing the, inf the affinity that Flores has for needing good corners. A lot of depth at the corner spot. That's what they did in New England, as you mentioned. And that's what they're already doing it with Jones and with Howard. And they need, it can't be about just those two guys. It has to be about, yeah, I, I'm going to have as much depth in the secondary at the corner spot that I can get. So even though it might've been a questionable move, it, it was definitely expected. Yeah, no, it wasn't surprising, but again, he better pan out. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Coming up in fairly soon, or, the, or that's going to be a black mark on, on that draft yeah. for a while because of what they passed up on. Uh, but again, it's really difficult to, to complain a whole lot about what they've done, yep. considering how far they've progressed in one year. That to me just looked like a miss. Okay, as far as have you have you really did have you done it like a deep dive yet as far as the playoff scenarios yet, or is it too early to kind of look at what would be the best situation? Again, you have to assume they're going to beat Cincinnati, and let's just assume they're going to lose to the Chiefs. So let's just make those assumptions. When you look at those last three games, if that happens, have you looked that far ahead and said, well, if, you know, if they win two out of the three there, they split the next two weeks, they should be fine. Uh, I think the Raiders game is going to be the one that's 
really, really going to be the key game because the Raiders are in the mix, even though they're coming off a a butt ugly loss against the Falcons. Yeah, brutal. Uh, But if we go by the logic of the Dolphins beating the Bengals and then losing against the Chiefs, New England could be problematic because they play good defense. They kind of shut down the Arizona offense this week, but it's a game the Dolphins certainly can win. At Buffalo in the final game of the season is a tough game, especially since Josh Allen seems to always have good success against the Dolphins. So to me, that's the key game there. I think wild card's a lot more realistic than winning the AFC East. Yes. And if you're looking at potential playoff matchups, the, there's not a there are not a ton that are really attractive. K, KC KC is not very attractive. No, that winds up who it is. Tennessee is not attractive because the idea of trying to stop Derrick Henry when one of your question marks is stopping the run is not ideal. If it winds up being Pittsburgh, that doesn't. If KC winds up overtaking Pittsburgh for the number one seed, then you now you're having to deal with that defense. Uh, although the Pittsburgh offense isn't quite as explosive as it's been in the past, but you still have Big Ben to deal with. So, but again. If they get to the playoffs, that's all that matters. Yeah, Dolphins will be happy to be there, and um, it'll be like a, a major step in the right direction after the season they went through in 2019. Uh, but again, Timmy, it goes back to that that Vegas game is a key game, and now we get to watch it in prime time on that Saturday, December yeah. 26. Yeah, it's nice that they uh, that's the triple header the day after Christmas, the 26th. They'll get the prime time game with Las Vegas. And we're, look, I think we find out w- the rest of the season with the Vegas this week because they're playing the Jets. And last year they went to they played the Jets, uh, mm-hmm. even though the Jets aren't as bad as they were last year. But they, and they had they had the type of game that they had last week against Atlanta. So mm-hmm. has Las Vegas turned the corner legitimately? Are they much better than the team they were last year? The, I believe they are. Give them the benefit of the doubt with one bad loss after the chief loss, which was a good loss. But if they mm-hmm. lose to the jets, it's, it, I think it's over for them. I don't think they could psychologically rebound from losing to Atlanta in the way that they did. And then to lose to a winless team. So that becomes a huge game for Vegas. Yeah. I just have a hard yeah, time believing they'll I, lose that game. Yeah. yeah no, I, I have an impossible <laughs> time. I actually, I thought the Jets could give the, the Dolphins problems a little bit, and and then Sam Darnold then you is watch, just lost. He's lost. Well, the the, the decision making among the coaching staff is is really not good. I mean, you're you're zero and eleven, and in the second half, down by ten, you, you punt from your forty two and your forty three yard line. I mean, seriously, and then you have a kicker miss a twenty nine yard field goal. You have Sam Darnold throwing across his body from the Dolphin thirty two yard line yeah. on third down. It, it's it's a bad team, poorly coached. Uh, I'm not a big Sam Darnold fan. I never was. Uh, yeah, he's I, done. I, yeah, yeah it, impossible for me to see how, how the Raiders could lose to the Jets. But if they do lose to the Jets, yeah, they're done. Yeah, actually, they're, they probably have a better not, chance to, to win the Jets if Flacco played, to tell you the truth. Mm-hmm. See, if Flacco goes up against a team like the Dolphins, he has big-time trouble. That's just a defense that, the, that you just can't, as we've seen, it's just a bad matchup for the Jets. The Raiders, they have a bad defense. I would trust Flacco more than Darnold against the Raiders because I don't trust Darnold at all. But they're not going to play him. You know they're not going to play him. No, they won't unless he gets hurt again. Yeah. Correct. Which is fine by me. I don't want them to win. They're they're, they're five weeks away from Trevor Lawrence. So. Yeah, I I think they're, I think they're heading into Trevor Lawrence. I just just would like Jacksonville to win another game. Unless he says, I'm not playing for the Jets. Nah, that's not going to happen. Never go there. Nah, that's not going to happen. He's not that type of guy. and I mean, what are you going to say? No to New York and yes to, uh, I don't know. Who else is in the running? Oh, Jacksonville? Jacksonville. Come on. Um, lastly, that call, that catch by Parker, I mean, I saw that. I, saw, I remember the, uh, I was talking with Ryan Dunleavy about it. We recalled the same kind of same situation with the cult game and the Ravens where Marcus Peters had the interception, but it mm-hmm. looked like there was no way that was an interception. Then they were like, well, if you super slow-mo, it does, you know, you can see that he's got the ball in possession and okay, whatever. But this one, 
I, I mean, I, I don't, it's, it's driving me crazy. And it's driving fans crazy about what used to be catch. Then they changed it. Now they're changing it again. I, I, this is, you know, you know, what's going to happen. It's going to happen in the postseason, and it's going to, and, and it's going to happen in a big spot and fans are going to go ballistic. Well, you want to get me going on a rant? Let's talk about instant replay uh, to me, which is which I despise to no end. I do too. Primarily, oh, you can't hate it as much as me. I don't, I don't know if that's possible okay. because because to me, immediately it kills the flow of the yes. game. Number one, number two, you arrive at what I think everybody would agree is the right call. What seventy percent of yeah, the time, maybe very very un- the, very I, unusual to see them overturn something. Yes. But, but when it was first presented, the idea, and I believe, in fact, it was quoted as such, the idea of instant replay is that 50 people are in a bar, see a play, all 50 agree that it's the wrong call, then you overturn it. Mm-hmm. To me, I, I don't understand. Instant replay should be, okay, let's look at it once, twice, obvious, change the call. If it's not obvious, don't change the call. Move on. That's, that's if you have to have instant replay. I, I think we all survived... NFL football for many, many yep. years before instant replay showed up, even if there was a bad call here and there. I, there, there, it's just, I, I hate it. There are no words to, dis- to describe how much I hate it. I've, I've actually, if you, we, we have to go all the way back to when it first came. It, you know, it's hard to believe how long instant replay has been around. Because uh, it, it, you have to go all the way back to when, like, the first five years, I think, when I started out in radio down in South Florida. And I remember doing a show at some sports bar out in the, by the beach, and I remember talking about this and specifically saying when everybody, all the fans, loved the idea of instant replay, and it was like 99%, we all want it, and I at the time didn't. I was like, here's the reason I don't want it or don't like it, because like just as what you said, I like it. I- I'm all for it if – if it's going to work all the time or most of the time, and it's going to be quick and easy and you're going to change things. Great. But it's not changing anything and it's making, and then like you said, slowing things down. And if it's not going to work 95% of the time, I don't want it. I hate the idea of watching, watching, having in, in, in certain, a lot of situations, having to wait when a play happens before I can cheer. Before I can mm-hmm. go, oh, wait a second. I don't know now. Especially the goal line calls. I hate yep. that. You th- oh, it's a touchdown. You start celebrating. Well, was his knee down? Let's go check. It's right. You know, okay. Maybe his knee was down. Maybe it wasn't a touchdown, but it's human nature. We, we've, like you said, we've lived with it for so long. I just, I can't. So I can't stand it either. I've just yeah. kind of given up on it, though. It, I mean, it's sports. I mean, it's, it's not, I mean, seriously. Um, the only sport where it works is tennis, because you have you have like oh every every, com- every shot the, the yeah, yeah you have the computerized thing that makes that it one hundred percent yeah mm-hmm. and it's quick yep it's quick and there's no doubt here it, here it's slow a lot of times it also I believe when it first started there was supposed to be a time limit on this and <laughs> yeah. sometimes the replay goes on and and on and you come back and you still don't know if they got their call right. yeah that, it's just and and to me the eyes and maybe I'm crazy I missed something, but the eyes told me there's no way no way on earth that was a catch by Devontae Parker. He didn't even think it was a catch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's when you know things are bad. You know okay. he's gonna learn from that and go oh even if I don't think it's a catch next time I just gotta act like it is. Fake it. Fake it. Yeah. Yeah. It's. Uh... You know, I I wouldn't, I mean, if I had to actually like have a negotiation on it, my first negotiation would be, okay, if I have to negotiate, then no rinse and replay in the regular season. Uh, Maybe we could start week 17 or something like that. And then that's it. I mean, can can we negotiate at least with that? So we don't have to have it for the first six, you know, 15 games of the seasons. I mean, because isn't this when it started like that, that Houston Pittsburgh game? Isn't that like when the when it really started to go because it's a playoff game I and Houston scored a touchdown remember. and he took it away from them and. But I'll give you two more things that bug me about it is that there are certain plays that are not eligible for review. Yes. Okay, so if I am the victim of an egregious call, 
I can't get any remedy for it because it doesn't fall yeah. in the category where my opponent can. That's number uh -huh. one. Um, and then number two is the issue of you have two challenges, right or wrong. Yeah, that's so ridiculous. If the, ref, if the ref makes an egregiously bad yeah. call that anybody could see was wrong, I lose a yes. challenge even though everybody could see yeah. it. So in that sense, would wouldn't it make more sense where you keep your challenge yes. if you happen to be right? I don't, it's... yeah. There's so many things that are wrong with it. It's just just crap the whole thing. Yeah, I, I you know, maybe one day they will. I, you know, I it, doubtful, but who knows? We, we can hope. Yeah. yeah, I'm not I'm not holding my breath, but I'm with you. I really hope so. All right, Alan. So Cincinnati next week, and unless anything crazy happens, uh, I'm sure the Dolphins and their fans will be happy with another ugly win. That's all that matters, winning football that's games. What it, that's what I would count on. I'm not expecting a work of art and. The, and if they if they don't win, that's going to be a depressing depressing week in Miami. Let me tell you. And like you said, it's not just the quarterback; it's no Joe Mixon, and that's huge too. To not have Mixon in the game, I mean, he is really their best player. Out now that Burrow is gone for the no year. No question. So no question. Yeah, yeah it's just a, it's a bad team. It's just a bad. Yep. Team. All right, Alan. We'll talk to you next week. Appreciate it. You got it. Take care, Greg.